Hello, and welcome to NDT Now's podcast game, exploring topics in NDT which affect your business. I'm your host, Mary Beth Michelli. Today's podcast is brought to you by Edify Technologies, the world leader in advanced non-destructive testing solutions designed to always keep you beyond current. For more information, visit edify.com. On today's podcast, we will be talking about how your business development and relationship management people are the keystone to your company's success. From maintaining open communications and relationships with customers and potential customers, to collaboratively helping customers solve problems, to providing that critical feedback loop to R&D professionals, upper management, and customer service. Your business development people are the reality check that companies need to maintain relevancy in the marketplace. Today, we have with us Anthony Williams from Comet X-Ray, who has 25 years in this type of role, and we'll be discussing successful approach to this kind of relationship management and what it brings to companies in the NDT space. Tony, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Mary Beth. So for our listeners who don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about your career in NDT? Sure. I started uh, my career with um, Phoenix X-Ray Systems and Services, which was a uh, X-Ray 2D and 3D X-Ray company that was based in Germany with uh, U.S. uh, facilities out of uh, St. Pete, Florida. Uh, in 2006. Um, It was later acquired by GE Inspection Technologies, and I worked uh, for them um, in North America, uh, selling x-ray systems and computer tomography systems to a variety of different uh, uh, customer audiences, uh, largely within the aerospace, automotive, and medical device markets. Since then, I have moved into more of a market and business development role where I have, um, I spend most of my time working with our customers and end users of our equipment to better understand what capabilities they need that we currently do not provide today. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, In our intro, we brought up three roles for the business development professional. And of course, this is near and dear to my heart because I have always been thrust into a business development role. So I'm very passionate about this topic um, and I'm looking forward to discussing this with you. So of those three roles, we have relationship building and maintenance, collaborative problem solving with customers, and the feedback loop. I think most people understand sort of the relationship building side of um, BD. So why don't we jump right into the collaborative problem solving with clients, which I know for me is what I enjoy most. Um, Can you explain what that means and and how you go about implementing that? Sure. Here at Comet, you know, we're very curious, right? Curiosity is at the heart of our soul, um, you know, it's it's really ingrained within our values. So we want to understand what challenges our customers have and how can we help them overcome those challenges? And not just how do we overcome it, but what sort of implementation, how, how can we best help them solve the problem? Not just to give them a solution, Uh, But, you know, um, X-ray has become like any tool that anyone has in a toolbox. And the NDT user takes out the X-ray system just like they do a hammer or a saw for that matter. And what they want to do is use it to solve the problem. And what we want to do at Comet is make sure that we not only give them the proper solution, but also what's going to work in the shortest time frame and what's the easiest to use, right? So we try to understand not only what are they trying to do, 
all right? But also how can we make it easy for them? Interesting. And so let me just follow up for a second. How I find that sometimes when I'm trying to get to work with our customers on a collaborative process, sometimes it's difficult for me to get their honest feedback or their honest needs, right? And and um, so so maybe you can just talk about that process. Sure. How do you how do you interact with them and and um, how does that process go? Yeah. So basically, it's we all have we all have shortcomings, right? And I think when we put our shortcomings onto the table and talk about what we know that our product can and cannot do and what we know it doesn't address and start the conversation off there by building uh, confidence in uh, the partner across the table from us that we understand and we truly are looking to learn and change, right? Because often a lot of people use the term collaborative just to mean we want to work with you, but it doesn't mean that we want to really get into the recipe and look at it and analyze. And, you know, we just want you to take our solution and we'll tell you how best to implement it. <laughs> and what our customers want is they want to know you know, how can we help them, not just us helping ourselves? Yeah, I think that's that's a wonderful approach to this. And I, and I think especially with um, the message that you guys are delivering, which is sort of the, you know, we're willing to in, invest in innovation that helps the customer. Um, and I, I think they really appreciate that instead of you guys just saying, Yes, but we have this and you could use this this way and it almost fits your needs. So, right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's really great. Um so I guess that leads me to my next question. Obviously, you work for a company and what if the solutions offered by your company are not the best ones um at the time and right. maybe something's not in the roadmap? How do you how do you deal with that? Well, you know, what we try to do is we try to avoid that situation in the first place mm -hmm. um, by always listening and having uh, conversations, honest, candid conversations with our customers. And as for those that don't know, Mayor Beth, we don't sell directly to end users. So uh, we listen to our OEMs and our channel partners who have the end user relationship. And we use things like trade shows and uh, technical meetings in order to uh, talk directly with end users to understand what they're looking for. And for those end users that are strong subject matter experts, along with our customers, we like to bring them into our development process. We have a development solution process that involves the customer at an early point. Um, we bring them in at a time where we're still trying to figure things out. And is this the right solution? Is this the right direction for us to work? Because in doing so, we don't, we try not to develop a product that, um, doesn't have a need. We're trying to develop products that customers absolutely require and uh, demand the performance of. So we do try to avoid the let's invent it and then figure out the market. We try to bring that subject matter expert into our innovation early on to avoid that. But for a hypothetical reason, let's assume that we do make a mistake and we do design something that isn't right. We know that we're not the best fit for everybody, right? And so at Comet, it's perfectly fine for us to be honest and just tell our customer, we're, this is how our product works. This is what the benefits are. 
but based on what you're asking here, the the things that will not address. All right. And you may find a better fit from one of our competitors. And we leave it at that because the important thing is to help the customer succeed and not to be a stumbling block or an objection for them. Yeah. And ultimately that, that builds the relationship even further, you know, when you, Absolutely. when you have to send them somewhere else, but I love that you guys um, incorporate the, the subject matter experts so early on in the process. That really does lead to, you know, because there's nothing harder than selling um, a technology that, that maybe um, was invented and there's no real clear need on the other yeah. side. Correct. Correct. We like to say that that's the old way of doing things, right? In today's world, you really need the subject matter experts up front. And I think that's led to a lot of the innovations we've seen out of Comet this year, you know, with the eco and of course the meso focus is, um, you know, some of the innovations that that clearly had a lot of input from the beginning. So yes. Yes. Um, that's exciting. So, and, and then this really goes right along with that. But so last thing we spoke about is how the BD, BD team can provide a feedback loop for the research and development team, um, as well as the upper management and customer service, right? It's really that right. bridge between all of those different groups that maybe sometimes don't exactly talk um, with, each with each other and Right. So can you can you cover those three scenarios and maybe give an example of, of how the BD team works with each of those groups? Sure, sure. Um, we certainly interact with all levels of the management team, as well as um, with uh, the various functions within the business. The way that we structure ourselves is that we have regular uh, communication um, with product management, for example, and uh, all of our projects are done in programs. So if we're developing something new, uh, it gets assigned to a program manager. The program manager has a team of uh, people that they work with. And so we meet regularly with the program management, uh, as well as the product manager. The product manager drives the programs. And uh, we make sure that we're communicating uh, our knowledge of what it is that the customer is really trying to do, how they would like to get the job done, right? And we have those regular meetings that either occur weekly or biweekly. And then within the leadership team, we certainly have one-on-ones with for example, myself and our global VP of sales have uh, regular bi biweekly meetings where we talk about what's happening within the channels that I manage. So, you know, I let him know and share with him all the information that I'm collecting and I'm hearing. Some of it is good, some of it is not so good, but he needs to hear everything and needs to have a good understanding of what's going on. And so I do provide that. And um, with the same, the same goes, holds true for that of our technical customer support, right? So our service element, uh, have regular meetings, not only with the global service leader, but also with the regional leaders to make sure that our customer needs are fully understood and are being addressed. That's really great. And it sounds like it's a great environment um, that everybody listens to what you have to say, right? Yes. Sometimes there's not, there's not that openness to listening to where are we falling short? You know, right. where, where can we improve? Um, yeah. So that's, that's really great to hear. Well, it leads to one of our values because it's, you know, we, we believe in trustful collaboration, right? Is one of our core values. And, with that, then I become the voice of customer for a given channel, 
right? And certainly it also helps, like I said, that we have subject matter experts, whether they be our customers or end users that are also able to uh, communicate directly with our leadership team as well. So, you know, we try to, to keep the lines of communication uh, open bi-directionally to make sure that we are all working together. That's really great. And I think that is often an overlooked value of what the BD team brings to the company. Um, and I know we were talking about this a little before before we um, started the podcast, but I said it's, you know, end of year and a lot of people are looking at marketing and business development saying, well, what value do they bring to the company and how do we measure that metric? And um, these are some of the intangibles that really lead to a successful company um, offering innovative products that people want to use and maintaining those relation long-term relationships with customers, with end users, um, so that everybody's on the same page working towards the same goal. And I think Absolutely. that's, um, yeah. And I, I think that's really um, something that sometimes is overlooked when we get down to the budgets of next year and what do we, you know, how do we crunch the numbers and, um, you know, so I'm really glad you highlighted those those um, those roles for the BD team. Yes. Well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, share what we do. Um, and and of course, like I said, it's near and dear to my heart because this is what I have ended up working in for most of my career. So I, uh, um, you know, you see it on a regular basis, but you know that people don't fully get um, why that feedback loop is so important to each one of these different groups. Um, because, uh, you know, keeping everybody on the same page, open and communicating in a very non-confrontational way is not something that is um, easily accomplished by everybody. It takes a special individual. So, Thank you for being that individual and um, communicating that to our listeners today. Appreciate it. Um, and thank you for listening today. Remember, join us every month here at ndtnow.com, brought to you by Edify Technologies. Learn more at edify.com.